The motor should be installed only on the beam with the pre-drilled hole near the fiberglass mechanism. It is the only beam with this hole and it is custom made for the motor to mount in. This beam should be installed as the middle beam when laying out the rafters. In the optional motor kit you will receive one motor, one motor pin, a small front bolt, a long rear bolt, three washers, and five nuts. Make sure you understand the front and back locations of the Solera rafters. This is important in the construction of the motor. Slide the long side of the motor pin in the fiberglass mechanism. If you are looking at the Solera beam from back to front, then the long side of the rod will enter in the right side. This step is very important. Open the Solera brackets all the way so that the niche lines up with the trapezoid louver cut in the rafter. The niche is to make room for the louver. Between the solar beam and the niche, there should be a span of about four inches. This is only to help the process of placing the screws later on. Connect the front motor to the motor pin in this order. The short front bolt, the washer, the front motor, the washer, the motor pin, another washer, one nut, and then an additional nut as a lock nut. You don't need to tighten the bolts too tight. Connect the rear motor to the Solera beam. Adjust the rear back of the motor so that the hole in the rear motor lines up with the rear hole in the Solera beam. You can adjust the motor or open and close it by connecting wires to a 12 to 24 volt battery. The battery from your wireless drill will work. Connect the long rear bolt to the rear of the motor in this order. The long rear bolt, the rafter, the rear motor, the nut, and then an additional locking nut. Test the motor with the 12 to 24 volt battery. Connect the electric wires from the motor to the control box. If the wires are too short, they may need to be extended. Verify that the wires are properly insulated and connect the control box to an appropriate power source. The wiring may be run in the rafters if you like. Take care not to damage any of the wiring. Use an electrician snake to pull the string and the wiring through the rafters. Measure each dimension between the rafters and take this dimension from where it will be connected to the drive shaft pin. Cut the drive shaft one inch less from the dimension just taken. Use a deburring tool to remove inside burred edges of the drive shaft. Ensure that all the burrs and the residual powder coating is completely removed. Prior to connecting the drive shaft, ensure that the louver brackets inside the rafters are fully opened. Connect the drive shaft to the pin in the middle rafter. Always start with the middle rafter and then slide the outside pin into the shaft. Secure the drive shaft to the pin with number eight screws. Do not hit or hammer the drive shaft pins with anything. You may want to lubricate it with graphite or another type of lubricant. Leave one inch of a protrusion of the pin on the exterior rafters. This will enable you to remove the pins should you wish to disassemble your patio cover in the future. Do not use any hammers or heavy tools on the shaft or pins. This will cause irreparable damage. Connect the rafters to the brackets with the remaining screws. Follow this process for each side of all the remaining brackets. Test the function of the rafter mechanism to make sure it, it functions smoothly. Run your wiring into a weatherproof box with a 110 volt power source. Secure all the wiring neatly. If you have purchased the optional wind and rain gauge, Install that in an unobstructed location.